like us is alive. <laughs> you don't have to venture far from our cities and towns to experience nature in a way you never have before. So refreshing. You may know me as an actor and descendant of Arundhra and Arabana people. But nature is my medicine. Holly's a writer. They have that mythic fairy tale quality. Whose inspiration is the magic of the natural world. Come with us. <laughs> and slow down. as we go back to nature. Come with us to the Mount Lofty Ranges, the Adelaide Hills, where the land is lush, plentiful, and has provided for thousands of years. Winding our way from the hills to the ocean, we meet a senior Ghana man and explore the resting place of the creator giant, Nanu. Stroll through the landscape that inspired one of Australia's most recognised artists and uncover Poe's affinity with nature, fueling her passion for food and creativity. Each living thing holds a piece of the puzzle. We all have wisdom and knowledge to share and nurture one another. The land the animals, the ocean, the people. We are all teachers, caregivers and providers. Our adventure starts in the foothills of the Mount Lofty Ranges at Morialta Falls. From there we travel the Adelaide Hills to Harndorf stopping in at the Cedars. Then wind our way down towards the Great Australian Bight, where we explored the Fluru Peninsula. Watching over the city of Adelaide, the Mount Lofty Ranges have a special importance to the Ghana, Paramount and Narendiri people. The Ghana believe the rangers themselves are the fallen body of a creator being, the giant Nanu. Nestled in the foothills around Adelaide is Morialta a beautiful, rugged bushland with cascading waterfalls. The Ghana people would retire to the hills from the plains during the cooler seasons. The name Morialta is derived from the Ghana word Moriata, meaning ever flowing or running water.
senior Aboriginal man, Mickey O'Brien, is a descendant of the Ghana and Narunga peoples. Twila! Mani Bodne! Twila! Wakana Padne! Ah! Nay. Ghana, Virko, Mankalankala, Marawachanga Ghana Mena. Minya na na mani putiji, na nari kamatri maricha, na wangadi mani the budni gani yatana, here in the yata, mari alta, nano. Welcome, welcome to the lands of the Ghana people. Welcome to mari alta being the place of the ever flowing falls. But today I call upon the spirit people of my ancestors not only to bring goodness upon each of you, but to send away that sadness or badness that lingers upon us all. So the smoke just goes over you. I am an ambassador of the Ghana people. I'm the sixth born male of seven children of my family. My father is Yela Berka, the old man of the sea, and my mother is a Narunga elder from the York Peninsula. I'm going to ask you to take a leaf. The reason we are taking the leaf is that the leaf is connected to the tree, the tree is connected to the ground. The land is the oldest living thing in the world. Therefore, it has the knowledge and the wisdom of everything. So I exchange my leaf with yours, Nada Nadlu Kamanka Yarakuman Indi, which means today we can give, we can receive, but together we become one. No one person holds all the knowledge and wisdom in the world, it is shared. So Nakara Naichaya, thank you for coming to the lands of the Ghana people. You are the honoured guest. Say so, Naichaya. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. My pleasure. Nikki, when you give a welcome to country like that, is there anything in particular that you hope people take away from receiving such a gift? I think it's really important uh, when we do a welcome, and particularly when we do something like a smoking ceremony or leaf ceremony, it is about the fact that we can engage with each other. We can leave something with you. So the leaf is that reminder of the knowledge and the wisdom that we hold from the land. It is personal, that it is connectable, and it is about an exchange. This place has many stories, has many connections uh, to the Aboriginal people. But we have Nanu, uh, is the giant. Nanu was the person who named all the areas along the Adelaide Plains. Hopefully, you'll get to see Nanu because he only comes to those who are ready to see him. I think I see him up here. I see the profile of a man's face. Yeah. I can see his forehead and yep. his nose and a big smile. Yeah. Yeah, I can see him. You're looking out that way. You know, Nanu is not only the giant of this place, but he is the spirit of this place and he protects all of those landscapes uh, that it's named across Adelaide. As the overseer. He is. Yeah, overlooking the country. Yeah. Uh, it's a privilege to see him, yeah. At first, I wasn't sure what Michael was talking about when he mentioned Nanu. 
He said that I had to be ready to see him or that he had to be ready to reveal himself to me. And when I walked up there and I turned around, I was like, wow, there he was. He just appeared, emerging from the rock, looking over the land like the protector. The spirit in the land is exactly the same spirit that we have in us. It's impressive. This is a Nunu lift? Yeah, this is Nunu's Wadley or home. It's got a beautiful view. Sitting here, taking all this in, this beautiful cave, the afternoon light, mm. wind in the gum trees. Such a peaceful place. Mm. Hearing all the sounds that are around us brings home that vital truth that we are nature and nature is us when we come to places like this, you know, it enables us to ground uh, with the, you know, the spirit of the land. And our people had this uh, philosophy of uh, Yarra being tunis, being mm. uh, reciprocity or mutual benefit. It's about saying that we don't need to know everything, but we must seek to find things. That we can look after the land, but we also look after the people. So this tunis was very much a, a part of all of us and that uh, when our physical uh, ends, our spirit returns to the land, that's why we look after it whilst we're here because we want it to be here when we return. Cedars was home and muse to one of Australia's greatest artists, Hans Heysen. Intensely proud of his adopted country, the German-born painter became a well-known and critically acclaimed artist. capturing the natural environment in its truest form. His subjects included the eucalyptus tree, celebrating their diversity and their beauty. Through his work, he changed the way we view the Australian landscape. Some of these gum trees are around 600 years old. Oh, wow. There it is. I reckon this gum here, and even these two, are these three that we can see here. Mm. See by the contour of the land. Yeah. So this is what it looked like in 1952, 68 years ago. Mmm. The baby bush has all grown up, hey? They have, yep. 
all the background. Mm. The colours of gum trees are so unique. And though I don't know very much about painting, I can really respect how much Hans Heysen captures those unique colours in his paintings. It's so easy to recognise these are gum trees. Mm. They ring so true. When you think about it, it's amazing how both Hans Heysen and this landscape embraced each other. It seems as though they both had a deep understanding and respect for one another. Heysen was a conservationist way ahead of his time, lobbying the Harndorf Council to protect trees and surrounding bushlands. Along with his family home, he purchased 150 acres of land. Much of its natural landscape still remains. Heysen spent countless hours creating this enchanted garden. He also planted Himalayan cedars that inspired the name of this property. The Heysen's daughter, Nora, followed in her father's footsteps. The first woman to win an Archibald Prize for portraiture, she was a successful artist in her own right. Both would spend hours out here painting, connecting their senses with the plants, trees, grass and flowers. Take a moment to observe the landscape as if an artist seeking your muse. What calls to you? Does a flower inspire your creativity? Take in what you see and smell. Notice its exquisite geometry. What colours are there? There is life and beauty radiating from its being. There is an essence that is in both you and the flower. Photograph or draw the flower and share it with us at hashtag backtonatureau. Tracking the Mount Lofty Ranges south, we journey to the Fleurou Peninsula. Its rolling coastal hills, gullies and windswept trees look out to the Great Australian Bight and Kangaroo Island. Within 100 kilometres of Adelaide, Deep Creek Conservation Park protects the largest portion of remaining natural vegetation on the peninsula. This forest is home to some of the oldest stringy bark trees in South Australia. Withstanding all the natural forces, fire, wind and rain, these magnificent trees provide shelter to many native species inhabiting this forest. 
Along with branches, tree hollows are important and valuable in nature. Fungi, birds, insects and the seasons contribute to the creation of tree hollows, a constantly evolving habitat. The animals that live in them don't just choose their hollows randomly. They are selected based on size, the depth, insulation and the entrance to the hollow. Well, these hollows are pretty scarce in Australia now. There's not much real estate around. Yeah. But here, in the Stringy Path Forest, there's lots of shapes and sizes still available. Still plenty of homes. Look how weathered they are. Yeah. You can see yeah. what they've endured. Yeah. And these smaller hollows, mm. they take about 100 years to form. And the one that houses the parrots and the masked owls and the possums and the black cockatoos, they take 200 years to form. Just when you think trees can't get any more magical, hey? Oh. Born in Malaysia, Po Ling spent the first nine years of her life in Kuala Lumpur. Her family later migrated to South Australia, where she now lives and works as an artist and chef. I didn't realise you were an artist mm. as well as a chef. The inspiration nature provides must be endless. The way you see it and the way that you connect to it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. The earth is always speaking to us mm. if we're listening. I mean, just cooking with the seasons, you know, is telling yeah. us what we should be doing. It's giving us all these cues. I learned so much from gardening. I grow a lot of my own food. So it's become a very big part of my everyday life mm. to, to be getting my hands dirty. So how do you see it as an artist? As an artist, I always tell my stories to this girl. I always show her with um, a bestie, which is usually an animal. And it's telling the story of me coming from another land mm. and trying to blend in. So it's usually an odd couple that's yeah. together. That's me and Holly, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There is infinite inspiration to be found in its symmetry, its geometry, its rhythms. And, you know, sometimes you'll see echoes of patterning, like you might see the same marking on a leopard as you would on a butterfly. <laughs> I love that about nature. There is perfection in so many forms and elements. And the resilience, you know. I mean, look at all these grass trees that have obviously been yeah, they're regenerated. Regenerated yeah. um, from fires. I just, I just find that so inspiring. Like it shows you how it's able to regenerate, and mm. so, so can you. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not bigger or lesser. We're just part of the tapestry. You know, we're just one of the threads. Kangaroo Island looking today. Yeah, I didn't think it looked that big. Me neither. 
the Ghana and the Nadanjiri people, they classify Kangaroo Island as a very spiritual place. They call it Gata, which means the lap. The Ghana and the Nadanjiri people, they believe that when you pass away, the spirit will travel over to that island, it'll heal and revitalize, and it'll return to the mainland to start the next journey. Beautiful is that. Mm. As I come into my senses here, I'm reminded that everything is connected. Our bodies, the land, the ocean, plants, animals, the trees, we all contribute to that connection. And learning the story of Gata brings home how that connection is never ending. taking full advantage of the amazing honey available in the region. Whisk together one cup of ricotta with one and a half tablespoons of honey and one egg. Then stir in one cup of milk. Then one cup of self-raising flour. Add some melted butter to the frying pan. Cook the batter in batches, two minutes either side. Serve the warm pancakes with a dollop of whipped cream and more delicious local honey drizzled over top.